guys will be back here in Goa, India. This day is the last day of the liturgical year. Tomorrow is the first Sunday of Advent. Today we consider that Jesus Christ is coming to judge the living and the dead. All of us are going to be judged not only individually, but as a people. Remember when you look at the Old Testament, it says many times in sacred scripture, Israel has sinned. It doesn't say the bad Jews sin, but the good Jews are happy. God doesn't say that. Israel has sinned. Therefore, Israel must be punished. And he also says at the end of the world, it rains upon the just and the unjust alike. And when the chastisement comes at the end of times, it shall rain upon the just and unjust alike. The Protestants think that there will be a rapture, and that the good guys will go up and sit on a cloud and watch all the bad guys burn. But that's not what our Lord says. The Lord says the suffering shall come to the just and unjust alike. And when we look at the Old Testament, we see that God did punish Israel. Daniel was a very holy prophet. But Daniel had to go in exile, just like the other Jews. Jeremiah was a very holy prophet. He also went into exile, but he went in the land of Egypt. Daniel went to the land of Babylon. Now we are here in Old Goa, or near Old Goa, just a few miles away. And we have in Old Goa a type of the whole history of the world and its ending. It's a little photograph of what is going to happen to the whole world. We read what the ancients say, or only a few hundred years ago, about this magnificent European city in the middle of India with its beautiful shops, its magnificent buildings, and its extreme wealth. The place called Goa. When you go to Goa, you will see the most wealthy and beautiful churches, and the most magnificent <coughs> homes, and people living in great prosperity, for the money that comes from Goa is never ending. And surely Goa shall be in its great glory until the ending of times. For such is the great kingdom of Portugal, and the glory of Portugal surely will last to the end of times. But in Goa visited one day Francis Xavier. St. Francis Xavier saw Goa in another way. And he said, this land is made for God, and it shall be judged by God. And he made a prophecy. A prophecy of what happened 200 years after his death. And they made a prophecy and said, if these people who are of the faith, if they stay in the way of corruption, if the people of Goa, these Portuguese and the Indian people of Goa turn away from God, and they are not faithful to God, God will punish Goa, and there shall come a great plague. So it came. So it came. 1742, 1743, whatever year it was, 1700s. The cross in St. Monica's wept. And they saw the cross weeping. And across the way there was a miraculous growing cross that you still see in the side altar in the cathedral. Remember that cross was originally made by a little shepherd boy who was praying to our Lord, and he took two pieces of stick, two pieces of wood, and he put them together in the form of a cross, and he said, a few Hail Marys, and then he left the cross, forgot about it, came back the next day, and the cross was larger. And he said, the cross is larger than it was yesterday when I assembled it. So he said more prayers, and he told his friends. Then they went and told Mommy. Mommy did what any good mommy should do. She beat the kid. Hmm? What are you doing lying about the cross? There's no such thing as a growing piece of bamboo. Bang, bang, bang. So she beat the kid. But then others came to look at the cross, and went to beat the kid again. They said, don't beat him again. I think the cross is bigger. 
So then they brought the cross to the priest, and it continued to grow until it was too large for the little chapel that it was in, and they brought it to the cathedral. And that year, 1742 or 43, when the one cross wept, the other cross stopped growing. It grew and grew and grew. And then in that year of the plague, it stopped growing. And the other cross did not weep. But that year of the plague, it wept. But the people, most of them said, Oh, it's just a miracle, it's just a sign, it means nothing. And they were very much like the Jews that Flavius Josephus describes. Flavius Josephus describes the Jews in the year 68 AD in the city of Jerusalem. Remember that Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ said that the city of Jerusalem we, we destroyed and there will be left not one stone upon another inside the temple. And that's what Jesus Christ said, but they did not believe his prophecy. And so likewise, more than a thousand and six hundred, seven hundred years later, the people of God did not believe the prophecy of St. Francis Xavier. But in 68 AD, there came warnings. In 68 AD, there was seen in the skies, Flavius Josephus describes it, he says there were seen chariots, an angel on a chariot, a fiery chariot, and the angel in the fiery chariot went around the city of Jerusalem, and he was swinging the sword at the city. And some said, God is angry with us. And we are going to receive the punishment that Jesus Christ prophesied 30 years ago. And others says, no, no, God is happy with us. And the angel is going to protect us. And they had a big dispute about the sign. There were other signs of angels appearing in the sky over the city of Jerusalem, swinging swords. And some said, this is a sign that we are going to be destroyed. And others said, it's a sign that we are going to be saved. And so some of them remained inside the city, and a few Christians escaped. The Jews surrounded, the city was surrounded by the Romans and came one of the greatest massacres in the history of warfare. All were slain inside of that city. Not one survived. Those who were not killed by the Romans killed each other in one of the most ugly battles in the history of the world. And even the Romans who had fought many battles and killed many men said, I have fought many battles, but never won like this battle in Jerusalem. One Roman soldier described how he was swinging his sword and getting ready to kill a Jew. But before he could kill him, the Jew fell dead because another Jew stabbed him in the back. <laughs> and when sometimes the Romans were swinging the sword at a Jew, the sword would remove his sword from the Roman and turn to kill his fellow Jew beside him so that he would be killed by his fellow Jew and the Roman at the same time. The Romans also said, during this great battle, we did not hear the war cry. We did not hear the screams of, of battle, for they were as dead men, though they were still alive. Death was in their faces, and they were all living death. And even the Romans who did not believe in God said, God is here, and God is angry with these people, and God is bringing down His punishment upon this people, and even the Romans knew it. And so they were all slain in that terrible battle of Jerusalem, which is a type of the end of the world. In 1743, a similar thing happened here. A great plague came, but it only killed the people in the city of Boa. They were very proud. They were very rich. They were very secure. And though they had churches, they did not need God. It was only an external for them. And they had forgotten the love of God. They had forgotten the knowledge of God, though there they were Catholics. There they were the followers of God, but they were not following the law, and they were not following the prophets, and they were not following the faithful way of the church. And therefore, God sent a plague, and they were slain. Now we go and visit old Goa. What do we see now? Where are all those beautiful buildings like Lisbon, and like Paris? Where are all those rich streets? They are gone. Sacred Scripture tells us, such is the glory of man. It is as grass. It grows today. It's gone tomorrow. And remember another thing about grass. 
Suppose that you happen to love grass. You have a great love of a particular blade of grass. It is located in the middle of a field that is 47,000 hectares in size. And so you go to the middle of the field, I love this blade of grass. Which one? I think it's that one. Maybe it's the other one. Can you find it? All grass looks the same. How is it that we are so attached to a piece of grass? And so it is with sinful man. Every generation is the same. Every generation that rejects God is the same. But they think they're special and they think they're different and they write their names down, names that shall be forgotten forever. Where are those buildings? They are gone. Who is going to rebuild them? No one. What about those souls? They are damned, and they are buried in hell and forgotten. Is old Goa gone? No. Let us revisit it. And there you will see stone churches. Because our Lord Jesus Christ said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. So we have a little symbol of the whole history of the world in old Goa. We go back to that place. You know that if you were in Goa in 1729 and you stood at the Bon Jesus, you could not see the cathedral. You could not see St. Francis Church. And you would need to ask directions on which little side street to walk down and which alleys to turn in order to get there. Now you walk out of the Bon Jesus and there's the cathedral and there's St. Francis Xavier. You look behind you is St. Anne's and over there on the other side is the Cajetan Church. Why do they have so many churches? But no one lives here. Because they abandoned God, and God punished them. For Francis Xavier had the power to bless. He also had the power to curse. Just as our Lord Jesus Christ used His power both ways. But what's the purpose of the cursing? Only to cure. You know that sometimes you have a boil on your skin. There's a poison inside of your blood. And what must the doctor do? He must take a lance and he must pop the boil and let the poison out. And that's the way a sword is carried by a priest. Sometimes a priest must swing a sword at a wound and he must cut. Why? To get out the poison. And that is all that happened. And so there's a poison that had to be got out. And so our Lord Jesus Christ is about to drive out all the poisons in the world around us. We are in a time in which the whole world is going to experience, probably before 2017, what Go experienced in 1743. There shall be a plague. God has told us that the plague is coming. You will see signs and wonders, signs at the end of times. There will be great earthquakes in various places. There will be tsunamis. There will be great and tragic events of nature, such as has not been seen before. And all these are a reminder to the world to repent. But what is happening to the world? They are not repenting. Which is in the Philippines. Last year, the greatest of all recorded typhoons. <laughs> Killed more than 50,000 in the Philippines. But what did they say? Maybe 5,000 died bodies everywhere, and they lie. The whole of Leyte wiped out on the east side. And what do they say? Only a few casualties. I was there seeing much of the damage. And then what did the priests say? You know what the priests said in the Philippines last year? <coughs> you know why there was a great typhoon, what we call a hurricane in America? Because of global warming. You see, that's the problem. Global warming. And so the priest and his girlfriend agrees. The problem is global warming. They are not men of God. We know that when God sends a chastisement, it's like a spanking of a child, that a child might correct himself. But here God sends a spanking. And what do the priests say? Do not correct yourself. Do not see this as a sign from heaven. And that's what the Jewish priest said in 68 AD. They told the people, this is not a sign from heaven. 
this angel with a fiery sword. No, no. This is our protection and not our punishment. And so they read badly the signs. You know that the stone of the churches of Goa are a reminder. Heaven and earth shall pass away. My word shall not pass away. The stones are still there. They speak of the faith. One thing I noticed against Vatican II, if you walk into Old Goa and you can look down at the stone and it says something in Portuguese. I don't know Portuguese. It's the vernacular, right? But no one speaks that vernacular anymore because the Portuguese are gone. A temporary language for a temporary people. But if you look up above, the main entrance of the church of the Bon Jesus, and other places on the main altar, you'll see AMDG, Ad Maiorum Dei Gloria. And this is in another language called Latin. That I can understand. That remains. Portuguese comes and Portuguese goes. French comes and French goes. English comes and English goes. But the language of God remains. Ad maiorum dei gloriam. It can still be understood. The motto of the Jesuits, St. Ignatius, of Francis Xavier, the great saint that walked this land, whose body remains here because he loved this land with all his heart, as did John de Brito, another great Jesuit, while we wear the red sash. John de Brito said, My home is India. My heart is here. And there is something most sacred and special about this land. There really is. I have learned it myself. There is something sacred here. John de Brito saw it. St. Francis Xavier saw it. Thomas saw it. Something special is here. And what is it? Ad maiorum dei gloria. The greater glory of God. That's what this land was made for. Let the Portuguese come and the Portuguese go. Let the Spanish come and the Spanish go. Let the Hindus come and let them go forever and be gone. Forever. With all their false gods. Let the Muslims come and let the Muslims go. But Latin remains. And Jesus Christ remains. And those stones remain. And when the world comes to an end, and the body of Francis Xavier is picked up and reunited to his soul to rejoice with him in heaven. The angels will come here to God on the very last day. When the fire comes and burns up those churches, when the fire comes and burns up this land, the angels will come just before, and they will take the body of Francis Xavier, and he shall be pulled up to the right side of our Lord Jesus most beautiful and powerful with sacred feet. You know what it says? It says in the Gospel, Blessed are the feet of the preachers of the Gospel of Peace. And St. Thomas tells us, when you go to heaven, you'll be able to tell the priests because of their feet. Now most of it you can tell the feet because of the smell of our feet. <laughs> Father's here. You can smell the feet. But St. Thomas Aquinas says, that when we go to heaven and we will see the priests, how will we recognize them? Since they won't be wearing their cassocks. We won't be wearing their priestly vestments. Vestments. We will recognize them by their feet. These are feet that carry Jesus Christ. These are feet that took a host from the altar and brought it to souls. These are the feet that carried the sacred arm and the sacred hands that were raised to bless. These are the feet that carried those sacred hands that were raised to wipe away the sins. They were the feet that carried the tongue that preached the faith. They were the feet that carried the eyes that looked upon the host. They were the feet that carried the body that was made the child of Mary. They are sacred feet, the feet of the priest. When we walk by the body of St. Francis Xavier, Consider the sacredness of those feet. Because when the world comes to an end, the angels are coming to this land 
They are going to take up the body of St. Francis Xavier, that true body, and reunite it to his soul. And those feet shall be polished and made new and wonderful. They shall be the holiest of feet. And therefore, what is happening in Goa is a symbol of what's happening in the whole world. All of the treasures of the rich world. Why was Goa rich? Because they made money from ships. They made money from spices. They made money from gold. They were very wealthy, and with that wealth came corruption. The Francis Xavier warned. St. Francis Xavier said, beware of the corruption. Ye Portuguese, you better not be having 11 wives, as they often did. You priests, be not corrupt. Go out and convert souls for Christ. But they stayed in their monasteries in the wrong way. And then those who were good priests were persecuted by the authorities. And what happened? A plague. A plague happened. The plague is coming upon the world now. We're already experiencing it around us. Look at all the souls around us. <coughs> they do not want the truth. And we can see the souls around us, like those Jews in Jerusalem, that even when they're about to die, even when they are being called by God to repent, at the last moment they will still raise their fists in the sky and say, Non serviam to God. They will raise their fists and say, I will not serve until the end. And only some shall repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ made it clear that that sum would be very few. He said, but for the sake of the elect, the chosen ones, for the sake of the few that are going to be saved, those days shall be shortened. For if those days were not shortened, no flesh on earth should be saved. We are in those times right now. Look at all the lies available. Every kind of heresy every kind of error, every kind of lie is available to us. And the truth is so hard to find. And fewer and fewer there are who find it. And so we pray the Blessed Virgin Mary to quickly crush out these lies, to shorten these days. This is the last day. Tomorrow is the first Sunday of Advent. What do we consider on the first Sunday of Advent? the end of the world, the coming of Christ. What do we consider on the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, last Sunday and this whole week? The end of the world, the coming of Christ. But we consider it in two ways. When the world ends, sin will end. When the world ends, <coughs> lies shall end. Satan's evil shall end. And all that is wicked shall end and be forgotten. And therefore it's a glorious day. And when the world comes to an end, it shall be purified and made more beautiful than it was at the beginning. When God created the world at the beginning, He saw that it was good. But when He looks at the world again, after Jesus Christ has shed His blood for it, after His Holy Mother has rearranged the furniture, the house of the world was beautiful when it was arranged by the Father. But when the mother comes and arranges things, when it has the touch of a mother, somehow it will be more beautiful. Huh? And the Blessed Virgin Mary is going to rearrange the trees, rearrange the rocks, rearrange this earth so that it can be a proper place for her son. And when she's done that on the last day, we will call this place heaven. And we will walk on the same ground we walk on now, only it shall be a new heaven and a new earth. And all evil and all sin shall be forgotten forever, and it shall be gone, and we shall be here. We are faithful to our Lord, and are eternally happy. Eternally able to walk anywhere on the earth and say, this is where God was. This is where God redeemed. And we will say that we will think of the words of the angel. When the angel said to St. Mary Magdalene, St. Martha, and the other holy women, when they looked inside of the tomb on Easter Sunday morning, the angel said, Look at the place where they laid him. Look at the place where they buried God. Look at the place where they thought God would never move again. 
Look at the place where they shut up a stone in front of the tomb of God that he might never be seen again. Look at this place. How beautiful it is. So it shall be for God. So it shall be my home in Kentucky and America. So it shall be in Africa. So it shall be in Antarctica. So it shall be on the North Pole. The angels will say, look at the place where they laid him. Look at the place where Satan said he would reign. Look at the place where they killed God. Look at the place where they buried God. And see, the stone has been rolled back. Where there was darkness, there is now light. Where there is death, now there is life. Where there was lies, now there is truth. Where there was hate, now there is love. The love that is God. The truth that is God. The beauty that is God. We think the trees are beautiful now as God created them. We'll only see the new beauty of the reformed heaven and reformed earth and she'll be happy forever. We will go all over the same earth quicker than we do now in airplanes. We'll be able to go in an instant to any place. And the angel will say, look at the place where they laid him. This is where mortal sin was committed once, but now it is wiped away. This is where Augustine abandoned God. But this is where Augustine came back to God. This is where Peter denied Christ three times. And this is where Peter was crucified and became a great saint. This is where Satan was last place before he was cast into the eternal fire. And this is where Michael waged war against the Satan in the heavens. And this is the place where Satan said, I will rather reign on earth, reign in hell, than serve in heaven. Behold, they are all the enemies of God are wiped out. Behold, they are completely finished. And all those who remain faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ until the end, how happy shall our eternity be. Francis Xavier will be with us. Only he'll be more beautiful than what he looks now inside of the tomb. And he's there in order to remind us that there's only one truth, there's only one love, there's only one faith, there's only one God that controls the entire universe. And he will come to judge the living and the dead on the last day. And his judgment is just and final. And if we find ourselves on the right side, how happy shall we be? And the Sassel Blessed Virgin, thinking about the arrangement of the furniture of the new heaven and the new earth, the Sassel Blessed Virgin is preparing this land for her son, his reign, and preparing the whole world for her son's reign. Let's ask her to make sure we're part of the decorations. Make sure that we are there with her in the new heaven and the new earth. And then Francis Xavier, you are God, and the kingdom of heaven. Close out with us, you all, and the Father, and the Father, and the Father.